So what is up everyone? Another month is coming gone, another month of movies, and today I'm going to be doing my monthly rankings for all the new releases I saw during the month of March. Over the month of March, I watched seven new releases. I watched about 20 movies in total, but seven new releases are movies that just came out, either to streaming or into theaters. So for this list, I'm only going to be doing the new releases, but if you guys are interested in hearing, you know, like all of the movies I've seen, whether they be just streaming movies, older movies, you want them to be included, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, this is obviously going to be my opinion. This is not like a factual list. This is just the reasonings for why I like the movies in the order I did. You know, a quick synopsis of the movies is I already did do reviews of almost all of these movies. So if you are interested in seeing the individual reviews, you know, a more in-depth breakdown of any particular title, I will link them at the end in the top. So be sure to click on that. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is going to be my ranking for my least favorite to my favorite, all seven films I watched during the month of March. And so starting off, no surprise to anyone who is watching any of my reviews this year, the least favorite movie I saw during the month of March is by far Driveway Dolls. Now this movie is just an absolute train wreck. I don't know where to start with this movie. I mean, there was no plot to this movie. It was just an on-running joke that never landed for me. And so much so, as I said in my review, it's inconceivable that the people who made No Country for Old Men made this movie, because I fucking hated this movie. This I didn't like anything about this movie. I mean, this movie's so bad, it's easily the worst movie I've seen of the year so far, and it might be one of the worst movies I've ever seen, as I went into detail on. All of the dialogue is just an on-running gag joke about, like, lesbian sex jokes, there's no plot. I mean, Ethan Cohen's obviously a hack if he's the one who wrote this. I mean, I wouldn't wish this movie on my worst enemy. This is one of the most miserable movie-going experiences I've ever had. It's like 90 minutes, it felt like four hours. So yeah, if I do a follow-up list to this, maybe like movies of the year I saw, things like that, do not be surprised if this one's holding down a top spot, this one's gonna be there in the end because, my God, this movie was bad. And also, no surprise, coming in at number six is Madam Web. Now let me be clear, Madam Web is bad, but Madam Web is staunchly better than Driveway Dolls. So much so in fact that let me on this little crusade where I was kind of like adamant that Madam Web is like not as bad as people said it was. I mean, don't get me wrong, this movie's absolute dog shit. It's terrible, there's so many things wrong with it, there's no plot, the audio dubbing is terrible, the actors phoned it in. But all that being said, it's still not nearly as bad as number seven, so that is a consolation prize, Madam Web. My main gripe with Madam Web is aside from all of the negatives I listed, you know, the main villain's lips not matching his audio, this movie was just boring as shit. Like, this was the most coma-inducing movie I saw on this list. This was the hardest watch. Not hard in the fact that the movie was bad. As I said, there's a movie worse than this, but this movie was so slow. I mean, this movie's like 90 minutes on VOD. I watched it at home, and it felt like three hours. I kept having to pause it to get snacks, go to the bathroom, things to break up the runtime, because nothing happens in this movie. And that's my biggest gripe about this movie. It's just a boring, forgettable movie. I mean, as bad as everything is, it's overratedly bad. Don't get me wrong. I've seen a lot worse movies than Madam Web, but it's damn bad. And for that reason, and along with all the plethora of issues this movie has in terms of like, you know, product placement in the movie, the studio, you know, over-editing it and post-production dubbing, this movie's easy, number six. So when we get to number five, we're starting to get the movies that are actually watchable. These are movies that aren't going to leave you scarred with PTSD from how bad they were. Damsel, a Netflix exclusive starring Millie Bobby Brown. And there was nothing particularly like bad about this movie. I mean, it's just like a forgettable movie. It's a Netflix movie. They're pretty much known for this at this point. And obviously this movie's kind of Netflix's play on like a princess taking on a dragon. You know, she's a strong, independent woman. Yada, yada, yada. We've seen it all before. And aside from the cinematography, like the CGI, the dragons, things like that, this movie's just entirely forgettable. All the dialogue, you know, the dialogue there is. Really, the only saving grace is, is the CGI and the acting. I think Millie Bobby Brown's good. I thought Robin Wright was good, as I said. But honestly, that's because the standard for Netflix is so low at this point. I mean, they even put out a watchable movie. It's well above average for Netflix standards. And when I was going back over this list, I was thinking, what movies would I not rewatch? Which movies were boring, aside from the really bad ones? This was easily, out of all the watchable movies, the movie I would like never rewatch. And obviously taking a little bit of context clues, it's a PG-13 Netflix movie, it's not too serious. I went pretty easy on it in my review, but I mean overall it was just forgettable. Just a super cliche princess in a dilemma, you know, a movie we've seen 150 times. It was just a, you know, a movie with a pretty big budget, so it was pretty watchable. Now surprisingly for me, coming in at number four was actually Immaculate, starring Sidney Sweeney. Now as a little bit of a preface, I'm one of these people who, as a horror fan, is pretty predisposed to not be super into religious horror. I don't know what it is, but for some reason it really doesn't hit with me most of the time. I feel like I've seen it a lot, it's pretty tropey, so 
For me personally, I found the vast majority of this movie pretty boring and it didn't really age well in my head the longer it went on. And even as I sit here and I kind of recall the movie, you know, the pacing of the movie, the ending, I mean, it just doesn't age well in my head. I mean, it's just something I really don't want to revisit. And as I said in my review, I couldn't see anything. So like in the middle of the movie, I didn't really know what was going on half the time because it felt like the movie was pitch black. And that should be pretty telling that I'm not really interested in revisiting it to kind of figure out what's going on or if it was my theater. I just feel like the first half of the movie was completely boring, completely tropey. We've seen it like 15 times. I mean, the cinematography is good for what you see, but the vast majority of it was dark. As I said in my review, Sydney Sweeney's great in this movie. I thought she basically saved the movie, and the ending was pretty good too. Like the third act, the final 15 minutes, but it felt really rushed. Like they needed to let you sit with it for like a couple more minutes and kind of enjoy it, but they kind of wrap it up really fast. But yeah, by no means a bad movie. I mean, I've seen a lot of people praising this movie, other reviewers and stuff. They were a lot bigger fans of the early parts of it than me. You know, some people like the slow burn. It doesn't really work for me. But as I said, I'm kind of predisposed to not really liking a lot of these religious movies. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. And in conclusion, that being said, you could definitely find yourself watching a lot worse, like religious horror than this. So for that reason, I mean, if you're into these movies, I would recommend it. But for me personally wasn't really my cup of tea. So coming in at number three is a movie that I think came out last year. I'm not really 100% sure, but I know it dropped on Netflix this March. And that movie is Your Lucky Day, starring Angus Cloud from Euphoria. That's actually why this movie kind of picked up a little bit of attractions, because I believe it's his last movie before he passed away. And what this movie is, is it's one of those movies that kind of takes place in the same setting for the entire movie, kind of like Phone Booth. And what you have is you have this cast of characters, a bunch of different people. You have this kind of like, you know, this gangster wannabe criminal. You have this couple, you have this policeman, an old businessman. They all find themselves in a liquor store one night. And in this liquor store, the old man actually pulls the winning lottery ticket. So you kind of have like a cast of characters that now finds themselves in a dilemma where they know somebody has a $300 million lottery ticket. And at this point, people are going to start acting different and they're going to have crime happening. And to the contrary of the whole religious horror thing, this is a genre that completely appeals to me. So like the premise in general is one that I should love. And this is by no means a bad movie. It's a fun little thriller. If you're one of these people who likes those movies in the same setting, you'll probably really like this movie. But if I'm getting critical, something about this movie that kind of rubbed me the wrong way compared to some of the other ones on this list is the characters in this movie were just so stupid. And I'm willing to forgive that usually in like a thriller movie, you know, it's for the sake of entertainment and stuff, but it felt like every scenario in this movie where a character had to do something like to keep the ticket, you know, how they would get away with it, how they would act according to like a police complaint. It was like the dumbest possible resolution. And I actually saw this movie back home with family. So there were numerous people watching it. So we were all kind of in on the joke because we were having a good time with it. You know, like we were enjoying the movie. We were joking about the premise, but we all just got to the point where we thought it was so asinine so ridiculous the way characters start talking the way they start acting it becomes glaringly obvious that like nobody would ever actually make it out of this scenario based on all the plot holes but given the fact that i'm predisposed to this genre i thought it was pretty interesting i thought the acting was you know above average i thought it was an entertaining time and compared to some of the movies on this list it's just completely watchable so if that's your type of movie i mean i kind of recommend this movie you can check it out on netflix again by no means a bad movie i mean i've just seen movies i prefer in this style a little bit more you know like panic room phone booth some of those movies i just think they do it better and now moving on to number two by far the weirdest movie on this list it's kind of actually a surprise it's up here for me and that's love lies bleeding now i did a review on this movie and i said in that review and i'm going to double down on it this movie was a24 as fuck and when I say that, if you're familiar with their movies, if you know any of their previous titles, you'll know exactly what I mean. This movie is heavy on the weirdness. And this movie starts out where Kristen Stewart works at a gym. She falls for this bodybuilder, Katie O'Brien, who steals the show of this movie, honestly. And what you have is you have this little 80s, like, love conflict thriller between, like, a mob boss played by Ed Harris, who has the worst hair to ever put on a TV screen. And this movie's A24 because it goes, you know, from a slow burn, kind of a romantic thriller, a lot of sex scenes. It just goes zero to 100 really quick. Graphic violence, the plot picks up these weird metaphorical choices they have, especially the ending. And if you've seen the ending, you know exactly what I mean by that. I mean, they just do a what the... And that's being said, as someone who's seen a lot of these movies, the ending wasn't like as polarizing to me as it will be to a lot of people, where there will be people who probably walk out of a theater because the ending is so weird. But aside from that, I was engaged the whole time. I thought this movie was really interesting. I loved the grimy, like, 80s aesthetic. I liked the synth music. I thought on the surface, the storyline, you know, it's pretty generic, but I think it was just done so well. I appreciate it. I really felt like it did the 80s well. And as a contrary to number seven, Driveway Dolls, as I said in my review, I thought this movie did the lesbian love interest good. 
I thought both of the actors did a really good job. They convinced me they were actually in love. I thought the love was centric to the plot. And as many sex scenes as they put in this movie, like 15 minutes worth, I was willing to forgive it and just thought it was kind of centric to the plot because you start caring about these characters. You want to see it progress. You want them to get away. I mean, I don't know. Overall, I probably wouldn't rewatch this movie, as I said, but I definitely liked it. I thought it was super unique and it's a memorable movie. At the end of the year, when I look back and I think of, you know, all the movies I might forget, I might remember, this is one of the ones I think I'll remember. And with that, we've made it to the number one spot for the month of March, in my opinion. And to me, this is the biggest surprise of the year so far, by far, and that's Late Night with the Devil. Now, as I said in my review, I didn't know anything about this movie. I've never seen a trailer. I didn't know any of the actors. I didn't know anything about the plot of this movie. So I walked in completely blind. And I said in my review that to enjoy this movie the most, you should know absolutely nothing about it. And I'm doubling down on that. I was brief on the plot and the way I described this because I definitely think this is one of those weird, unique movies where if you know absolutely nothing about it, I think this movie is an absolute hidden gem. Because as I said, this isn't even like a movie. It's like this weird fever dream where you're watching like a 70s late night TV show. And I was just so immersed in this movie. That's what I remember about it. I remember forgetting I was watching a movie. I was so into this. I thought the lead in this movie was just absolutely great at playing the late night host. I thought the 70s aesthetic was great in the point I thought I was watching a TV show. I thought the sounds were great. I really liked how they just played it out like a normal 70s TV show. They have like live guests. It gets progressively more serious because you have different guests on. I thought the guests act natural talking to each other. I don't know. For me, this movie just worked on like every level. I mean, this could be a kind of divisive movie too, but I honestly love this movie to the point like when it ended, I knew it was immediately my favorite movie of the year so far. And it's incredibly unique to me that like in 2024, you can have a movie work this effectively with no jump scares and be a horror movie. That's just so unique when a movie can pull that off nowadays. And again, when I look back at the movies this year, movies I would recommend to people so far, this is the movie that's coming to mind where it's like, I want to buy this movie. I want to rewatch it. I think this movie is a very memorable movie and it's easily in like that top three, top five of like the religious horror angles. But anyways, guys, that's my ranking for the seven movies I've seen that are new releases for the month of March so far. And as I said, if you guys are interested in me, including all the movies I've seen, maybe some older movies, some streaming movies, let me know in the comments down below. And do you guys agree with this list so far? Have you seen any of these movies? If you have, comment down below. Let me know what your list would be. Because obviously I didn't get to go to every movie. There's some movies that had no appeal to me and I'm not just going to spend money for the sake of a list. But if you did see some movies you thought were exceptionally good that weren't on the list that came out this month, do comment down below. Maybe I will check them out. But yeah, as I said, I'm just going to keep it brief in this video. I'm going to put a link to the actual reviews up here if you want to see more in-depth takes on any of these movies besides your lucky day. And that's all I got for this video, guys. As always, take care, stay safe.